There we go. So this is a very interactive and we can just kind of go at your own pace. So one of the cool things, hey Alan, cool things about Flipgrid is that uh, you can embed video and you can use these QR codes. Uh, and they have this new feature of augmented reality. So rather than me explain it, you guys can just experience it. So first things first is to download the Flipgrid app on your phone. Um, and then once you get it, you'll just log in with your school account and then get up and move around the room. So I have kind of around the room different, you'll see the QR codes. Some of them I've written like what they are. Uh, you'll even have one at your table and just uh, scan it and then you'll see like a little video. You can watch the video. Some are kind of fun, like it's going to ask you to juggle. Can we get mine a little yeah. For sure, yeah. Um, and then in other cases, you'll just see a demo. Like I've recorded videos of how to set up Flipgrid and how to, what a grid is and what a topic is. But just go around and play and kind of experience it. And if you want me to film you tr trying to juggle after you've watched the, the juggle video. I'll, I'll pass on that one, Chris. <laughs> hey, Emily. So I hit the little scan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Step back a little bit. So back up a little bit. Back up a little bit more. No, no, no. So here's what's going on. Back up even further. It's like really zoomed in. Oh, it's it's recording. It's literally my video. Okay. Wait, it, which know, video? This one is <laughs> how to create a topic. Yeah. So. Okay. Is this what's projecting on that screen? Up no, there? this you're you're interacting with your own video. Oh, I see. I don't understand. I don't. I don't. I understand, but I don't understand the connection. Like, okay. So, tell me, tell me the function. Tell me. Hey. Tell me. So imagine you're going to stations. Yeah. And you want to have instructions of how to do a station. Yeah. You could have a video instruction that you've recorded or you found. For, now that you're at this station, do this. That's on the video. Exactly. I got you. Yeah. Okay, now I got that. That one's, this oh, one's not a Flipgrid oh, one. Oh, okay, okay. But this one. This. Okay. Oh, can I? Oh, I can like it. Oh. So it's an so what you're experiencing is augmented reality, yeah. right? So you could have the the QR code anywhere, and then they scan it, and now they're getting. So this could be you giving a math lesson. Oh, that's cool. Right, yeah. and then at that station they're at, maybe they then do the equation, right? Yeah. Cool. And then as soon as they're done, they just. Yep. And then they wow. would exit out. Yeah. That's really cool. So I know you're interested in math, so here's an example one, right? actually right at your table. Okay, so you want to go to the App Store. And... I, I went through, uh, I did, I thought I, I just did Googled you? Flipgrid. Yeah, but you want, I want you, you to install the app, uh, uh, the Flipgrid app. Okay. And get that. All right, okay, get that one. Okay. And then you'll double click. I'm trying to think. That's pretty cool. Purpose. Yeah. Is it just to get them up and moving, or would you do this like in a museum so that there's something they're there's looking all, at? Is there a reason for them to do that? There's come up? all sorts of things. So I think now that we like have some people in, I can kind of show you a little bit of like what Flipgrid is and give a little bit of a context. Oh wow, okay. So Flipgrid, for those of you that Flipgrid, uh, yeah, so now you're ready. So I'll show you that here okay. in just a second. Go ahead and have a seat. So Flipgrid is basically a video discussion tool, right? So uh, think of it like a discussion board or like a Canvas discussion. Last week I did a session on Canvas discussion. All Flipgrid is, is a video version of that. So 
you can post on there uh, a topic and then students will then respond in the form of a video. You can limit it to the, a response of anything from 15 seconds all the way up to five minutes, okay? So in this way, the students, just like in a, a regular discussion board, like what we talked about last week, students can respond verbally um, using their phone or a computer, and then they can actually even reply to each other, right? Uh, and then you can star them, and you can actually spark new conversations based on student responses. So a grid is basically a, a, a topic. So you could have a grid for your first period or all of your English 11 classes or all of your bio classes, right? Um, and then within a grid, you then can have topics. These are like discussion topics. So uh, you can have as many grids as you want. You can even collaborate with others. You can add other people onto it like uh, other teachers to be part of it. Um, and so what I have here is a grid, a one cool thing grid. And then I've created different topics, right? So I created a, a discussion that was a math problem, right? So I said, uh, solve the following problem. Show your work by recording it with the whiteboard feature or recording yourself doing it on paper. So uh, in a math context, I could... Uh, post a problem and have students then pull out their phone and on a sheet of paper, they could actually record themselves as they're doing it. Or um, uh, Flipgrid has now a whiteboard feature. So with their finger, they could actually be doing it on a, little, on a digital whiteboard um, and responding. And so then what you, I would see as the teacher would be all these student responses with them showing their work as they as they do it, okay? I just responded to that one. Can you show what it looks like? I made a little video. Cool. Let's try it. Maybe it didn't submit it. Right? Oh, uh, maybe try one more time. Uh, so I have other ones that are kind of fun, like. Can you do the yoga tree pose, right? So here I have, a, I've embedded a video. So you can watch the video and then uh, you could record yourself trying to do it or have a partner record you doing it. Um, you can, I also did like a how to juggle one. Um, I had done a YouTube video on my choice PD sessions. So here I just embedded my YouTube video, so I could have that. Um, what they have added is this ability to have augmented reality. So augmented reality is when you know you look through your your phone and you see the room. You see the room, but then there's an augmentation to it. There's a video floating, basically. So this is kind of a cool thing because what you could do is have, so say you have stations, right? Students are gonna be going to different stations and you want them to get a little bit of instructions. You could have a video that they, when they get to that station, they pull out their phone, they scan it, and then they could actually watch your little video instructions and then do it, right? So this could be a math problem or how to do, we were just talking about like uh, making a wet mount of a, mic, of a slide or maybe it's a grammar skill, right? So they watch the little video and then they do. So then rather than you having to explain over and over and over again, they could watch the video. Um, and so what I've done is I've put these QR codes kind of all over for you guys and you guys started to play around with it, but I'd like you guys to play with it some more to experience what it could look like. So it's a little different at first because all of a sudden you have like this floating video and you have to hold the phone. Um, but I want you guys to experience it. Here's like how to create a topic in, um, in Flipgrid. This one is uh, how to add a video to a topic, right? That one back there is the how to juggle. So uh, let's see, what else I got? 
So when you create a topic or even a grid, when you go to share, oh, right here, it, so you get a, a code, which by the way, you could just put this in Canvas. They could click on it and, and uh, uh, you know, respond right within Canvas. Um, or you can get this. So at this point, I can copy this and paste it wherever, uh, or I can download it. Now, for the uh, how can you use Flipgrid to do the AR, what I did is I personally recorded my responses of different ways to use Flipgrid. And then um, I just went right here and I said print res resource QR codes. And so now here are all of the QR codes, right? So, um, oh, wow. yeah. So another way you could think about doing this is say you have done a project and you've asked your students to, to um, record in Flipgrid what they did in that project. Maybe their process, how they came about it, you know, things that went well, things that didn't go well. You could um, have them record like a reflection on that project, right, as a Flipgrid topic. And then after they've all submitted it, you could print these out and maybe have students post their work around the room and have them put their QR code next to their work. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now we think of like gallery walks. Yeah. yeah, so like now imagine a gallery walk where kids are going around uh -huh. and they're scanning each other's work and then they're hearing a video explanation of them rationalizing it or explaining their thought process. On their own pace. Yeah, yeah. So there's and kind of a... stuff explaining your own thing, you can go around and look at other people's stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Last year, when you first brought Flickr, I remember you mentioning that the campus integration was like a little shaky. Is you have you is it any better? Like, I haven't heard of it's gotten twice, and I have like a rubric in Canvas to like give them points for doing an assignment. Yeah. But I have to like watch it in Flickr and then score. Yeah. It. The I problem know. with the integration that I didn't like was that students had to go into Canvas click on the Flipgrid link, and then it would take them to Flipgrid, but they couldn't just pull out their phone and like scan it and go to Flipgrid. It was like forcing them to go through Canvas. So the merit of embedding it was that when they did an assignment, you could actually see it in SpeedGrader, so it made grading go yeah, yeah. really easy. Um, so it kinda, there's a trade-off. If you're using Flipgrid for any sort of formative thing, where it's not really a grade associated with it, but you're trying to use it for engagement, uh, formative assessment for them to monitor their own progress, or like in the case of a gallery walk, like showcasing, don't do the Canvas connection. It's not worth it. Right? Um, so I know you guys are all eating your lunch, but I'm a big proponent of learn by doing and experiencing, and then I can answer questions as you go. So feel free, walk around, juggle, yoga, learn the nuts and bolts. Um, did it work? Did it work? I ask who is using it already that you know of? Amy O is using it uh, pretty regularly. Last I heard, Sarah Voorhees was using it. Um, Jen has used it a little bit. Really simply, it's just like I have kids doing a capstone project for the year, and so what the what they just did yesterday was, hey, everyone, introduce your topic, why it matters to you, some interesting info, and then like throw out some questions that you want peer feedback on, and they're supposed to go back and watch other people record a response and say, here's my answer to your question. But I've used it like super, very superficial, not like just recording. Well, I mean, that, yeah. So that's, that's where I am right now. It's kind of cool, I can show you what it looks like on my phone. Mm -hmm. What's yeah. the most powerful thing you've seen it do, like in terms of teacher use? It, so Flipgrid is all about amplifying student voice, right? So we know like in the classroom, we tend to have the same maybe five kids who always want to yeah. speak, but then we have you know, the introverts, for example, that are really quiet. So Flipgrid gives a voice for everybody, right? Because they can actually record on their own time. They can re-record. Um, and so you can really bring equity of voice. Now, one of the, the things I've heard from teachers, like Amy, who's done it, some students really don't like um, their face on it. Right. And um, so there are. And, and they just added a new feature, which is really pretty cool. So, example, uh, 
can you do that voice coverage thing where oh, yeah. <laughs> like the witness protection program? Yeah, yeah. So check this out. You guys are gonna love this. Right? So here, say I'm gonna do it on my computer rather than my phone. So you have all these different features right here. I can add filters and I can actually pixelate myself. Oh, cool. So now, now they don't have to see that I have something stuck in my teeth, right? Ah, I can just yeah, like cool. talk. So that's really kind of cool. Um, he was looking at me when you said that. Yeah. <laughs> you can type stuff. Uh, you can. Oh, this is better than TikTok, yeah. Christopher. <laughs> they could also say, say they don't want to have their face. They could just put an emoji right over their face. Right, so there's workarounds and it's fun. So I think that's the other part of it is it's it, it resonates with kids because it's similar to some of like Snapchat filters sure, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. We'll yeah. Talk about it being like Snapchat for the blaster. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then there is this new feature of the whiteboard, which is pretty cool. Um, so now here's kind of like the math. It's clunky doing it with with a, a, like a cursor, but you know, you could actually be doing some, some minimal writing. Uh, clear, what else? So I can also, you know, upload a video. Upload, so maybe I already had a video recorded, I wanna share it, that's another one. Um, oh, and then this is kind of a new feature. So here they can actually do sticky notes. I think this is like if they want to jot down some notes for themselves before they talk or while they talk. That's helpful too. So, and then when they're done and they do their response, they can ha take a selfie and then you can add, you know, all, all the things over as well. That's their favorite part. Totally. They love it. Deck it out. All right. Go play. Experience it. What's it called? The little person you are? Avatar. Oh wow. Like these tsunamis and there's like a wave. Mm. Or there could be like really like high temperatures and like she wears the sun. Like oh, it's it was kinda cute. Yeah, that's very cute. Like, that's cool. I could that's so awesome. is that one the augmented reality? Yeah. Is that yeah. No one was confused. Like, what that yeah, it's I it's totally different. Seeing. Yeah. So I don't have my phone, so Oh well here, come here. Well, let's just explain. So you just get the Flipgrid app. Okay. And then you can either enter in the code or you can scan. And so it picks up on that code. And so now there's the augmented video. So if you're wearing progressives, <laughs> everyone has to look up your nose. If they, I guess yeah. nobody's there. So. But with everybody kind of playing this at the same time, could they actually hear it still? I mean, Yeah, there might be, need to be headphones or... You know, it, no, if, they all have earbuds. Yeah, I mean, if I was, say I was doing like a station, I would probably would have done it like here. So they can sit. And have yeah, so they would sit. Like it's, it's a little different. And I wouldn't necessarily say like a screencast would be the best, like where I'm recording yeah, the screen. Because it's, kind of it's small, but if it yeah. was like just you recording the instructions, mm -hmm. you know, okay, and so. I, ideally it's like 30 seconds to a minute, right? You give them a little bit of instructions and then they go and they do it. So they're not holding this phone up forever watching it. You can add a YouTube video, find a video on YouTube. Okay. And then. See the augmented reality one? That, that was it. Oh, that, that was it. That is augmented so, reality. Okay. So it's the, oh, augmented reality is, is the. The something. augmented reality is the the floating video. Like, do you see? I got it. I got it. I got it. Uh, yeah, I do. So it's there no matter where you are. I understand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's like so what's the, the function of that?
Why, why would that be an important thing to be able to do? Yeah. I don't get the silhouette of that. It's like, what? Well, maybe because you need, maybe you need to be at a certain location and record that you're there while you're watching it. Or, I don't know. What would be like? Why would you want to do that? Yeah. I so before they added that feature, it was literally you know just watching the video on the yeah, phone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it it's must be a very practical reason. Or is it reason. just gimmicky? Like, no, I don't think it's just gimmicky. I think. Well, I mean, I think there is a little bit of that, but I've seen it. So I've seen uh, teachers who had like um, back to school night. Mm -hmm. They had like a whole wall of like, you know how a lot of times at the beginning of the year we'll do like about me mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So the kids had their sheets of paper with their stuff mm -hmm. and then they had the little AR mm -hmm. codes right there. And mm -hmm. so parents could walk around and just be able to like watch the video on the wall, right? So and it so, keeps them there, like they can't move away from it, right? Yeah. So they're, they're, it's almost like you're engaging with the video more when it's augmented in reality, yeah, I think is kind of the idea. It's kind of anchored to something. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. But that's and not to say that you couldn't just watch the video. So uh, if you just use the camera app, your camera app is naturally a QR reader. So that it automatically says, oh, you want to watch the video? So now I can just watch the video without augmented as well. So say you don't like the augmented oh, thing. Oh, so that's the same one? That's mm -hmm. the same code as well. No, it's, it's a different oh, video, okay. but it's a, another example of it. Okay. So now you could just watch the video mm -hmm. if you didn't like the augmented. So our kids can log in with their school Gmail and it will like automatically work? Yeah, so when you are creating a, a topic, uh -huh. you can actually limit it so only people with uh, LGS student emails mm -hmm. can access it. Oh, so that's okay. how you can kind of restrict it to only within our own domain. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So math, the one that I've seen, um, Kristen Hamilton used it a little bit last year where she had kids um, do, I think it was almost even a take home quiz, but do her work, do student, students did their work on a sheet of paper and then they recorded a video like explaining their reasoning. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's like giving student voice, right? Like right. engaging them to actually talk through, talk math and yeah. talk through their processing. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's powerful for you to watch, but it's almost more powerful to engage them in the like writing and thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the second one sounds. They're super cute. And then, like, Kayla Thompson is the one who used the stickers, like, as part of her actual. Hey guys, it's Kayla. I'm here to talk about my capstone project, and my topic is climate change, and how climate change affects our health. This issue is important to me because I'm part of the generation, you're a part of the generation, that will be dealing with the consequences of climate change and the fact that it's been neglected by really the world for the last 30 years. Um, some issues that we will see are health and climate change are temperatures increase annually. Love girls. I know, yeah. she's so sweet. And it's funny because it's a reverse camera, so when she first filmed it, she was pointing, and she's like, my hand's pointing at nothing. This is like, all flipped on the screen, so she had to, like, point, you know, like. So, I've worked on kids and forced to make either house important medicine, medical things. So, now, say you saw that and you really like that. Like, mm -hmm. this student brought up a, gr a good question, right? So, you can. You can star it. You could where it is up at the, the top. App, the app version. Oh, yeah, so yeah. you could just star it. So yeah. when you have like the whole list of all the responses, mm -hmm. that would then pop up to the top. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then you can also make a mixtape. Oh, it's kind of a one. So you could create a mixtape of like a bunch of the best or like the funniest oh or whatever. Gosh, I totally want, want to do this with the but... final project for, yeah. for English 11 honors. Because they do all those different things, and then they're up in the room. Yeah. Right? I like they do and then that idea. code could Almost stay forever. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. Well, so that's what, cool. like, the tech is doing with their Body Worlds exhibit, mm -hmm. is having, like, an so augmented they they reality. Have, yeah. yeah. So you, tablets. You'll, yeah, they have tablets, but then they'll have, like, a digestive system just floating in the middle of the thing, and you can, like, walk around and see it. Like, that's kind of where 
augmented reality is cool because you can add like a whole nother yeah. museum within the museum. Can you um, link a slideshow, a Google slideshow, to one of these QR codes? So for when, example? so when you are creating a um, a topic. Create a new topic. Okay. So you give a title, instructions, so you can link a, a Google Doc or a sheet. So there's all sorts of different things you can add. So you can record a video of yourself giving a prompt or instructions or talking about something, like you, maybe you, whatever. You could upload a video, you can add a YouTube video. You can add an image. You want them to talk about a particular image. You can put that image in the topic. You can add a GIF, emojis, and then it links with all the, these other um, external tools. So yeah, if you have the, the URL at the top of the slideshow, it should work. Okay. I haven't played with it, but it should work. Should, will it display as a slideshow, or will it display a link to a slideshow? Uh, yeah. Let's just try it. 20. But why not just go to Google then is my Okay, so it'll just link them to the slideshow. Okay. It won't necessarily be within it, but they could, the they could, they could, the yeah, so to link to them. So once you have like a bigger project, if you have like the subtopics, how did you print out like all the QR codes that's right now? So you can only do the augmented reality with all the QR codes for responses to a topic. So you've created a discussion topic, and all, now your students have responded. Then you would um, you, have a you would print it. You all of yours. Yeah. So I that. so I was in. So here's the topic I created. Um, and now, oh, I'm at, so. Yeah. How'd you get that? Oh, is that the same? All the same. How can you, so I go to the topic, and then right here at the top is the print responses QR code. So from the page before, so if you go back one, so like let's say you made this like gallery walk thing, is there a way to print all of the things you made all at Like once? all the topics? All of these, like when you printed these QR codes, did you have to do them all separately? So the way that I got the non-AR ones, um, what I did is I... Uh, went to share uh -huh. right here, uh -huh. and I said copy, uh -huh. and then I went to my presentation here, and I pasted them all here. Oh, okay. so yeah. So then I printed it. Yeah, I had to. Okay. Yeah. I'm hoping that they bring the AR feature to topics as well, because yeah, yeah. what I the way that I did the AR was that I created a topic that I responded to for all of them, and that's how I was able to get the AR. Okay. So. So you had like your own internal like little page just for you to like develop yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you were doing a, a lab with lots of stations, you could create your own and respond to all of them, yeah. and then you spread them out. Okay. So it's kind of a whirlwind. It hopefully it gives you a taste. Like, yeah. book an appointment with me, and we can tailor it to you. I hope you got like some ideas of how you could use it. It's just, it's a really powerful tool. I think fundamentally because it gives student voice and there's lots of different applications. And it can, it's totally free. Yeah, it's owned by Microsoft and it's surprisingly free. Yeah, totally free. And there's a ton. So, um, oh, last thing, guys, I should show you. So, 
in my additional resources, there's a, a, an ebook that was made by some educators, the Flipgrid Guide, to, um, Educator's Guide. It's, it kind of walks through step by step. Um, their blog has a lot of really good stuff. I've created a collection as well uh, in Wakelet. So, um, and even today, I saw this, this tweet from a teacher that Tracy Bondi knows with. Uh, she's an English teacher and she was using stations today uh, and even including some QR code. So, a lot of cool stuff. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you.